99% of the species that have ever walked to the Earth have gone extinct. Sadly, the vast majority of species that have gone before will never be known about by us. Fossils give us a snapshot into what was gone before, but the picture is far from complete. The best glimpse we have into the lives of extinct species comes from the mummified animals that are occasionally found in the permafrost of the Arctic. They're especially common in Siberia, but also occasionally found in the north of Canada and Alaska. In this video, we're looking at five ancient mummified and fossilized animals that have been found in the permafrost of the Yukon in northern Canada. Welcome back to All About Nature. On my channel, I try to bring nature-related content that's both educational and entertaining. If you like this kind of content, then please consider liking the video, leaving a comment, or even subscribing to the channel. I need to say a special thanks to my patrons, whose regular support helps make this channel what it is. If you want to support the channel, check us out on Patreon. The link is in the video description below. Now, let's get into the video. While searching for gold in Canada's Yukon Territory, a miner uncovered the most intact wolf specimen ever found in the permafrost. The pup was in nearly perfect condition, with only the eyes missing. After examining the wolf, scientists were able to discover quite a bit about its life. It was a female that was between six and seven weeks old. Her diet had consisted primarily of fish, but also some large prey like bison. She also had no signs of decay or of having been attacked, meaning that she most likely died when her den collapsed on her, burying her alive. And this happened an estimated 57,000 years ago. After dying, she would have frozen pretty quickly and remained frozen until her discovery in 2016. Interestingly, while she is a gray wolf, She's from an ancient line that no longer exists in the Yukon. This means that her whole population was eventually wiped out and replaced by a different wolf population later. Hyenas are associated with Africa and Asia, with four extant species existing today. But the first hyenas emerged further north, in Eurasia, eventually spreading across much of the Old World. They were assumed to have only ever lived in Europe, Africa, and Asia, until a discovery in the U.S. state of Arizona rewrote their history. In 1901, what was believed to be a big cat jaw was discovered in a copper mine. The fossilized jaw was viewed by several prominent paleontologists of the time, before ending up in the National Museum of Natural History. When it was re-examined in 1921, it was realized that it wasn't a cat at all, but actually a species of hyena. But how did it get to Arizona? Over the coming decades, more hyena fossils were found in the southern U.S. and northern Mexico, and the assumption was that they must have made their way there by crossing the Bering Land Bridge. But no evidence of hyenas in the north existed. That is, until 2019, when scientists began formal analysis of old fossils found in the Yukon. Old Crow Yukon is famous for its fossil deposits. Over 50,000 bones of Ice Age animals have been uncovered, but no hyena bones were ever known to exist. In 2019, evolutionary biologist Jack Sang was examining two fossilized teeth found in a river in Old Crow in 1977. Within five minutes of looking at them, he knew that this was the first evidence of hyenas to be found in the northern parts of North America. We only have two bones or two teeth of this hyena from Old Crow, so it's a very rare animal. It was almost like a needle in a haystack. The hyenas are thought to have gone extinct in North America around 780,000 years ago, likely having been outcompeted when canines became more abundant on the continent.
The Smilodon, commonly known as the saber-toothed cat, is an iconic group of prehistoric animals with three extinct species known to have lived in the Americas. They had short hind limbs and were probably ambush predators, unable to run for long distances. They're most famous for their long upper canine teeth, and all three species are well documented in the fossil record. But North America was home to another type of large cat with similar but distinct characteristics. The scimitar cats included between two and five species in North America and were distinguished by their shorter canine teeth that had serrated edges. But with fossils being extremely rare, little was known about their ecology. In 2011, it was the discovery of a bone in the permafrost near Dawson City in the Yukon that changed our understanding of these extinct predators. Because it was preserved in the permafrost, the animal's genetic material was still intact. Scientists were able to map the entire genome of the species, and they were surprised to see that the genes of the two parents of the cat were quite distinct. This indicates that at the time of this cat's death, there was a large population of scimitar cats present in the area, with strong genetic diversity. In fact, they were proven to be even more genetically diverse than modern-day lions or lynx. Based on other fossils found, scientists already knew that the scimitar cats had longer hind limbs than saber-toothed cats. After examining their DNA, they also noted that they had adaptations for strong bones and cardiovascular and respiratory systems. They also probably had excellent daytime vision. These factors together suggest that the scimitar cats were likely diurnal endurance hunters, rather than being ambush predators like their saber-toothed cousins. The cats died out with most other North American megafauna at the end of the last ice age. When we think of camels, we generally think of the dromedary camels of North Africa and the Middle East, or the Bactrian camels of China and Mongolia. But camelids also include the Wanakos, Vicuñas, Llamas, and Alpacas of South America. With members of the camelid family being found so far apart geographically, it stands to reason that they must have lived in North America at some point as well. Actually, Camels got their start in North America around 45 million years ago. Today, no species of camelid survives in North America, with the last of them, the Western camel, dying off 11,000 years ago at the end of the last ice age. The bones of the giant camel are most similar to another species of extinct North American camelid, the giant llama. This led researchers to the conclusion that the western camel was probably more closely related to living species of camelid in South America than it was to living species of camel. But a recent discovery has changed our understanding of the species. Western camels preferred the temperate climates of the coast, so the majority of the remains discovered have been fossils. But on rare occasions, they managed to wander north, and in 2015, a paper was published describing a unique discovery. Western camel bones were unearthed in the permafrost of the Yukon. Because they weren't fossilized and had remained frozen for so long, researchers were able to take DNA from the bones, and what they discovered was surprising. Despite closely resembling giant llama bones physically, the Western camel was actually more closely related to modern camel species of the Old World, highlighting the fact that just because two species look alike does not mean that they're closely related. Genetic research continues to play an important role in the field of taxonomy. Not everything found in the permafrost is an extinct species. In 2018, in the Klondike goldfields of the Yukon, a small brown ball was discovered. It would have been easy to overlook, but thankfully, the miner who unearthed it recognized it for what it was and got it into the hands of researchers. What appeared to be just a ball of brown fur 
turned out to be one of the most complete ground squirrels ever recovered from the permafrost. Its paws, tail, and ears were clearly visible, but in order to get a better view of the entire animal, an x-ray was needed. The ground squirrel was around 30,000 years old, and mummified animals generally lose calcium over the millennia, making bones much less visible in x-rays. But in this case, the skeletal structure of the animal was in excellent condition, with its spine, ribs, limbs, and skull all clearly visible. Arctic ground squirrels are still abundant in the Yukon today and can live up to nine years in the wild. The specimen found in the permafrost is believed to have died young and was probably sleeping in its first hibernation when it was likely buried and killed. When the ground squirrel went on display for the public, Grant Zazula, a paleontologist for the Yukon government, told CBC News that he was excited for kids to get to see the specimen. They'll be able to see these animals and be able to really ponder, you know, life during the Ice Age. And we often see these big animals like woolly mammoths and everything. But there's a lot to be learned about the small critters that were living beneath the feet of these woolly mammoths as well. Scientists hope to be able to learn more about how ground squirrel populations have adapted so well over the last 30,000 years, and how they managed to survive major climate change events, such as the ending of the last ice age. Many of the ice age animals went extinct or just don't live in the Yukon anymore. So Yukon Arctic ground squirrels are this amazing story of survival through change. They've been around for a couple of million years, They've adapted to all these permanent, really pronounced changes in climates and environment, and they're still with us today. And that's it for today's video. If you guys like this content, then please let me know. There are plenty of permafrost animals to make a part two. And if you're able to help me out with a like and a comment, it would be much appreciated. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.